Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to answer the question, what happens if I don't stake and prune my tomato plants? What do they look like? And do I have to really stake and prune tomatoes? And the answer is you don't have to, but we do it to control the size of the plant and to manage the plant so that we can harvest it, manage diseases. And I'll, as we go through the video, I'll explain to you why. So in my no-dig garden here, sort of my experimental gardening, I have a pumpkin growing through here, but I also planted two tomato plants and you can see tomato leaves everywhere that's just from two plants that started right here on the right side originally uh, let's see somewhere in here there it is supersonic went in on May 2nd and there is the original planting and then over in here was a red cherry tomato I didn't prune it and it has taken over both of them and have grown across the entire garden. So if you don't prune or stake them, they are vines. They are going to crawl and sprawl everywhere. And as they crawl and sprawl, they're going to put out roots. You can see right there, all the roots coming off of one of the vines. If I try and pull this up, the vine, let's make sure I get a tomato and not a, I can't even move it, so that's the tomato stem. Because all along the vine where it touches the ground, it's going to send out roots. So when you prune them and stake them and you, you know, send them straight up, you only have one part of the plant going into the earth. And it can only take in so many nutrients, um, you know, and so much, so much of the uh, things that they need to grow, they only get to a specific size, which is usually large. But when they're sprawling across the ground, they are rooting everywhere, they are taking in more nutrition, and they just get massive, and they keep going and going and going. The problem is, is that when you do that, how do you really get in there to harvest everything? So a lot of stuff is rotting, because I'd have to walk through the tomatoes to get the tomato plants to get to the tomatoes. So if you let them sprawl, and they're still going all the way out here, this is like a 12 by 8 foot garden space, coming all the way out here, lots of green fruit. So they're healthy, they do a great job, but how are you going to really harvest all that? So I just want to give you, you know, what it looks like with two tomato plants left sprawling across the ground and doing what they do. There's a benefit to this. You get more growth, you get more anchor points with roots, if diseases come, if problems come, a lot more of the plant usually survives. And when the disease is under managed and gets under control or it just kind of dies off, the plant takes off again. But you'd have to sacrifice this much space for the tomato plants. Let's go inside and look at some plants that are staked and pruned. Well, before we get inside, I've shown these two plants before. On the left is a red beef steak, and on the right is a green zebra. They were planted, you know, right in the ground, they were staked, but this plant, you can see the broken post, it was a metal post, snapped and bent the post because I only pruned the bottom. There's a lot removed from the bottom so that airflow could go and it's just a way to manage uh, disease problems. But I didn't prune the rest of the suckers off really and just let it grow and grow up the post and they got so heavy with fruit that it just snapped the post and I had to kind of throw it over the fence. So if you let your larger tomato plants, these get maybe six, eight ounce fruits, kind of go without pruning, you have to make sure you have a really strong post in there because the weight of the tomatoes as they develop are, is going to snap the post or, you know, break um, the wooden stake or bend the metal stake. This one is a red beef steak and it looks compact, but it was all, staked all the way up to the top but as it waited, as the fruit grew and it became weighted, it just slid down the post and is sitting down there now. So if you stake it, it does help manage the vining issue. But if you just let them get as big as they're going to get without pruning them as they get taller, they're going to get really heavy and you have to manage that. So that's two cherry tomato plants and growing up an arch of cattle panel and they are doing really really well let's come on the inside there's some leaf spot in there that's being managed but let me just show you 
all the green tomatoes on here. And this is going to get sprayed with hydrogen peroxide again. But I am just trellising across this cattle panel. I designed it to create shade for some crops that don't like 10 hours of intense sun when the high heat is here in the summer. And you can see, you know, the plant which just started one over there on the left and one over there on the right. And I just weaved it up through the cattle panel. Now, I do less pruning this way because it's really spread out. I can get in there, I can spray, and I can deal with any, you know, issues with disease. And you can see if we get close, some leaf spot on there in case you're not familiar with what it looks like. It's usually brown dots with yellow rings around it. But we've just had crazy humidity and temperature changes over the last two weeks. But I'll take care of all that with the hydrogen peroxide spray. A couple more large plants. They're actually reaching the seven to eight foot range. And I just want to give you an idea. Your plants will get large. So you really have to set up stakes and tie them up well if you want to grow vertically with the plants, which I recommend because you saw what a mess it is when you just left to sprawl all over the ground. Again, these were cleared out or these were pruned down at the bottom to let the airflow go through. As it got hot, disease got this plant, spray with hydrogen peroxide, gets under control, all this new growth comes and you can see that it's starting to flower. There is no pruning really going on above, let's say two feet of my tomato plants this year, but they're kind of a mess. They can be managed, but you're going to be just tying them off in all kinds of different ways. Now, if you decide to prune, I have tons of videos, just look up tomato pruning and you can see coming off that main stem, one, two, three, four, the branches off five, basically suckers turn into production stems and they just take off and they go everywhere. I would, you know, typically cut off four of those and kind of start with one, let it branch out to two, let those two branch out maybe to two more, and then keep cutting back suckers to control the size of the plant if I needed to. And that's again what I want to stress, you don't have to prune if you can manage pests and disease, but just make sure you have the stake set up for them to really stay supported and not fall on the ground. And then we can wrap up, we'll go over to my big arch trellis of uh, cherry tomatoes. So this is my double cherry tomato arch made out of cattle panel. Uh, some of these plants are well over eight feet tall and I just kept weaving them through the cattle panel. There's nice big openings. They're about uh, five, Actually, one was a Roma tomato, I removed it. So there are four cherry tomatoes on this side. And you can see, you know, that they're producing. They're pretty healthy for this late of the year. Nice and green. And plenty of green tomatoes and flowers on top of the plant. Cherry tomatoes tend to do better than your larger tomatoes when the heat comes because they're just producing smaller tomatoes. So they're not as skittish about producing in the heat. On this side, these are current tomatoes, kind of fun, but just way too many to harvest and pick. I'm not going to grow those again. And then just different kinds of tomatoes, sunbursts, and then a red grape, yellow grape in here. But all being managed by just weaving them through here. So I guess I wanted to answer that question. Do I have to stake and prune tomatoes? And the answer is no. You see that it will sprawl across the ground. When you decide about whether or not to stake them, how much to prune them, I think it's really based on what kind of diseases and problems you get in your garden. If you can manage the pest and disease, you don't have to prune them as much as you think. You would only do it to control the size of the plant and that's up to you. Hope you enjoyed the video, it gives you some ideas of how you might manage tomatoes in your area. You don't have to stake them, you don't have to prune them, but if you don't, they really do get out of control and that's why you would stake and prune. Thanks for watching, please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.